going to create a WCF service. It's going to be a very simple, straightforward one, but the purpose is mainly to show that it's easy. It doesn't take a whole lot of time to make a trivial one anyway. A service has to run a host process, and there's lots of different host processes, but for ease, we're just going to use a console application. And we're going to call this service um, add one service. You'll see in a second why we're calling it that. A service exposes functionality to the users, and that functionality is through a contract, and in WCF those contracts are simply interfaces. So the first thing we'll do is add an interface. And we'll call our interface I add one. And we'll put one method in there. Um, now what makes, uh, what turns an interface into a WCF contract is the use of the system.service model assembly. And I'll show you how that works. We call this a service contract. The system doesn't know what that is because I didn't add the system.service model reference yet, so we'll have to add that. operation that we want to expose has to have an operation contract. And that's all there is to it for making the contract. Now I have to implement that contract. So as you can imagine, we just make a class that uses this um, interface. interface, we implement the interface, now we have to make the uh, service host, so that's going to be our program file. And what we have to do here, we have to create a service host. Here's the slightly tricky part. We have a service, but we haven't really defined the ABCs of WCF, address and binding. Well, we address the C contract, but address and binding. We do that in the app.config file. So now we need one more thing, an app.config. Now, I'm doing this from memory, so it might be a little tricky. 
but use the system that service model. We're going to have a conf um, behaviors section. service behavior and this is important because you know you can put certain attributes that clearly define what behaviors your service has um, behavior name is common One thing we're going to have, this is going to allow for uh, metadata. So we can look up things like the um, proxy, or we can have it create a proxy for us. So what we're doing is we're saying you can you know, get it. Once we set up the behaviors, then we actually set up our actual service. So services within there we have a service and within there we can define our endpoint um, our endpoint has to have a name oh, we'll give it an address it's going to be TCP so we don't have to put anything in there um, the binding like I said is TCP I mean, so for that we say not TCP binding Here's where we say our behavior configuration. We set that up earlier. That's common because we named it common. You can name it whatever you want. And finally, the contract. Uh, the contract has to be the full um, namespace. So just to make sure I get that right, it was namespace is add one service dot i add one. Now the service has to have a name, and that's also the full namespace, and that's just going to be the name of the file that actually, uh, the class that you actually used. So we have our endpoint. One more thing we need is our binding. Not our binding, our host. Where are we going to host this thing? Um, we're going to host it at, um, I'm sorry, I'm doing this from memory. Our base address is going to be, or it's going to just run it locally on the machine. So we'll say net TCP, because we're using the TCP protocol, and we'll say localhost. It's this machine. You have to pick a port to use. I don't think anybody's using 10,001. Um, another... That's for communication back and forth. Now we have to add a um, address for the metadata. So we're going to use HTTP for that. And that's going to be on local host. We'll say 10,002. Um, so I have a base address. I forgot to set up an endpoint for the metadata. So let's do that. Um, this address is going to be HTTP. I'm sorry. This is for metadata. So that's our address. And our binding for metadata is um, this and the contract is i metadata spelling in its case sensitive so you have to get that all right or it won't run for you i metadata exchange so what did we do here we set up a behavior basically we set up the behavior so that we could get the metadata we set up an endpoint to uh, expose that service using TCP. Here's another endpoint that allows us to get the meta metadata. And here are our base addresses um, so that the you know service knows what addresses to use. 
Okay, so armed with this information, I'll be so bold as to say that it should probably work. Let's give it a try. Endpoint is behavior of the service. It goes up here under the service. Of course. Anytime you got a problem with WCF, it's gonna be with your config file. It's it's a little tricky. F oh yes I do. I just told you that this is a basic and it's gonna be simple and fast and easy, but If this happens to you, it's because you're not running it as the administrator. And it can't open that port up. That's a bummer. I'm going to put it on pause and restart this thing. Well, let me save it. That is saved. Let me restart this thing as a... Uh, Administrator. Uh, okay. So, let's try to debug it. Now that I'm running as the administrator, I should be able to use that port. Hey! Check it out. My service is up and running. Now you might say to yourself, hey, it's just a window saying it's running. How do I know that the service is really running? Well, if you go to the app config, you see this is the um, address we set up to get the metadata. So if you right click on it, it'll actually open up a window or it'll open up a browser or something and show you, yeah, look, here you are on port 10002. And here's the info you need to set up. Uh, you get the uh, metadata set up a proxy. So that's a little more challenging than I thought, but um, we'll end it there. And my next video, we'll set up the client and uh, make it work.